everybody, I'm Mike Content. Content Law, we handle a lot of drunk driving cases, and one of the most common questions I'm asked by my clients is, how soon can I get my license back? So I wanted to make this short video to talk about something called a hardship license. Some people know it as a Cinderella license. Now the most common way to do this is if your case is disposed of through what they call a 24D disposition. I mean the case is all over and the judge has entered a particular sentence under, what they, under this 24D disposition, all right? If you got this disposition, you do have the ability to apply at the Registry of Motor Vehicles to get this hardship license. Now, what is a hardship license? The hardship license is a 12-hour license to get you to and from and, and or to drive during this certain period of time that's needed for. Most commonly, the hardship relates to someone's need to work, okay? Their job either requires them to drive for the job, uh, maybe you're driving a company truck or a company car, uh, or just to get to and from work, um, and public transportation just isn't going to make cut it for you in a reasonable sense to be able to get to and from work. Um, but it doesn't just have to be for work. It can be for other reasons as well. Uh, it can be for medical reasons. You have to get to certain appointments that you absolutely need your car to get to. Public transportation is not going to cut it. Uh, perhaps you're caring for an elderly uh, family member or something like that. Um, and even for educational purposes, those can be particular qualifying hardships, okay? In order to get this license, though, there's a process like anything else, all right? You have to dispose of your case to the court. Like I said, the judge has to have entered this 24D disposition, um, and you have to start in this program. So what you need to do, first and foremost, is go and sign up for this 16-week alcohol education program. This is the main facet of this 24D disposition. Now, you don't have to complete all 16 weeks of the program, but you have to get signed up and you have to get paperwork from the program saying that you did sign up, okay? You're also gonna need a letter from your employer if it's a work thing or if it's a medical thing from your doctor um, showing that this is a hardship and you need a license to get to and from these particular places during these particular hours. And you're also gonna have to show that uh, you can't get there, it's not gonna really work reasonably through public transportation. Um, you get documentation from this by just showing, hey, this is the route I gotta go, and there's no buses, and there's no trains going that way. And typically, a, a good Google search will get you that particular information. So like I said, the three things you're really gonna need is a letter, again, typically from an employer. You're also gonna need uh, showing that your uh, paperwork showing you've been enrolled in the uh, 24D 16-week alcohol education program and something showing that public transportation isn't going to have the same effect, isn't going to get you there in a reasonable fashion, okay? You take this paperwork and you can go on a walk-in basis to the Registry of Motor Vehicles, and they are still doing these during coronavirus. It's just a little bit of a different process. Um, and you bring your paperwork and you tell them what you're there for, and then you're going to get a hearing before a hearings officer to make this determination, okay, as to whether or not you have the hardship and you otherwise qualify to get this hardship license. Now, the hardship license doesn't just allow you to drive, drive anytime you want. It is limited. It's limited to 12 hours a day. Now, it's not the same 12 hours. Not everybody has the same 12 hours. The 12 hours has to be related to the hardship for which you're applying. Um, the most common example, like I said, is people need to get to and from work or they need to drive during work. So the hardship period, that 12-hour period, would have to have some relation to your work hours. So for instance, if you work a nine to five job, you're, you're the 12 hour period they're gonna give you is likely gonna be 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., enough time to get to and from work and all the hours in between. Um, if you work the overnight shift, say you work an 11 p.m. to 7 a.m., you're likely gonna get a 10 a.m., I'm sorry, 10 p.m. to 10 a.m. 12 hour license period. It's gonna be related to that. And it has to be the same all seven days of the week. You can't say, hey, I want, um, 8 to 8 on Monday, but I want uh, 10 to 10 on Tuesday. You can't do that. It has to be the same 12 hours during the entire period of the hardship license. But if you meet their criteria um, and the registry officer is able to confirm that, uh, and, and you also can show them, or at least they have no record of you driving on that suspended license. So for instance, um, if you had your license suspended for refusing the breath test um, um, and you were also caught after that, driving on that suspended license and picked up additional charge for that, you're not gonna qualify for the hardship. That's a disqualifying event. Um, but otherwise, most, most circumstances, they're gonna grant the hardship license for those, that particular period. 
Um, and that's going to run through the entire suspension. That covers both um, any suspension for a chemical test refusal, like refusing the breathalyzer. It also covers any court suspension um, that the court imposes um, through the disposition of the case. So it covers the entire period. And once those periods are over, you can actually go and get your normal license reinstated um, to, the, to a full 24-hour driving unrestricted. Um, but this hardship license is going to give you the ability to drive to and from work and do the necessary things you have to do um, while you do have those drunk driving suspensions. So if you have any questions about this, please feel free to give me a call, shoot me an email, or leave me a comment below the video.